We wouldn't get an official new Doom game until 2004. During that time, the FPS genre has evolved beyond the typical run-and-gun gameplay. You can thank Half-Life for setting a new standard. Story integration was now a huge factor, allowing the worlds to become more immersive. A new age has begun, and Doom would have to evolve too in hopes of keeping up with the changes. 2004 was a huge year for FPSs in general. Half-Life 2, Halo 2, and Far Cry were some of the huge titles coming out. And of course, after a long hiatus, it unleashed its next entry into the series, Doom 3. Running on the brand new id Tech 4 engine, Doom 3 was praised for its incredible, frightening presentation. With very little light source and a claustrophobic setting, it was trying to give players a fun, yet haunting experience. While critics lauded the game, Doom fans seemed rather split. It took away the fast-paced action of the original for a much more methodical approach to gameplay. Even now, there seems to be a divide as to whether this game is a worthy entry in the series. What was it about this game that alienated fans? If Doom 64 could pull off the horror aesthetic, shouldn't Doom 3 be able to do the same with superior graphics? Dust off your helmets, Marines. We're heading back to Mars. Once again, you play as an unnamed space marine who has been stationed at everyone's favorite company next to the Umbrella Corporation, the UAC. A group of scientists led by the rather suspicious looking Dr. Malcolm Betruger, who I think might be the bad guy, just a hunch, tampers with ancient evil technology. I'm sure this can only lead to good things for the UA. Nah, they unleashed the forces of hell. When will those UAC scientists learn? They so wacky. Anyway, our nameless hero survives the initial invasion and now has to make a long trek throughout the facility to stop hell from invading Earth. For the first time in the series, Doom 3 has actual story and characters, but you're going to find they're nothing more than a means to an end. There's some interesting ideas going on with the game's lore, such as what goes on behind the scenes at the UAC or how Hell operates, but at the end of the day, the story is straightforward. Go stop Hell from doing bad things. A staple of this series, truly. Most character interactions involve spouting exposition, telling the player what to do next. We never get any real personalities. Maybe a bit from Dr. Petruger, but he's just a bad guy that wants to gain power and everything else to fill his generic villain's quota. I will say that the voice acting is excellent. The performances every character gives does make them feel authentic. When the demons first attack and you hear screaming over the radio, the acting was spot on. I felt a genuine sense of fear as I made my way through the facility. It's amazing how one element of any medium can leave a huge impact on a person. We end up remembering those moments for the rest of our lives. Other than the voice acting, everything is generic in terms of the story. Nothing special, nothing new. At the time, people were impressed by the id Tech 4 engine, once again created by everyone's favorite technology-loving programmer, John Carmack. In ways, it's held up in some areas, especially with the dynamic lighting. It's used to brilliant effect in some parts of the game, not just from the low light of the facility, but from the demonic energy left over by the demons. It helps enhance the haunting atmosphere. Even the textures, while not incredible by today's standards, do a good job of bringing these worlds to life. The models on the monsters are also effective. Sure, they can appear outdated, but in a strange way, it just makes them more creepy. Sometimes outdated visuals can create a sort of unnatural, surreal effect, which makes the creatures more terrifying. I do like the redesigns of the monsters, trying to make them appear more intimidating. Although the imps walking towards you with their arms out just looks hilarious. That's like something you see out of a cheap haunted house attraction. <laughs> it's ridiculous, man. Human models are probably the most dated out of all the visuals. Though, due to their unnatural, clunky design, it does make things feel more uncomfortable around them. Like the UAC crew is hiding a dark secret and these people aren't to be trusted.
Coupled with the stellar visuals is great sound design. Seldom is there any music in the game, since its focus is on immersion. However, the ambient sound does a great job of conveying the idea of being stuck by yourself in the UAC. From low humming noises to computers beeping, it captures that feeling of isolation without fail. The demonic noises you hear during the hell stages are unnerving, being on par with the sounds used in Doom 64 soundtrack. The game's presentation is first rate. I can see why it was praised for its time. It took a much slower, horror-based approach as opposed to the run-and-gun gameplay we're used to. My only gripe with the sound design is the weapons. They feel underpowered to fire. There's no gratification from letting a bullet loose on a demon's face. I get it that the game doesn't have the same high octane action we love, but with any game, there should be some sense of satisfaction in defeating an enemy or completing a stage. Despite a few cracks, Doom 3's presentation has all the ingredients to deliver something action-packed but terrifying at the same time. How are they going to use this nightmare-induced setting to great effect? Oh. Oh no. Oh honey, just no. Why? You're going to go the cheap jump scare route? Do you really think trying to fake us out with loud noises is going to leave a lasting impression? Or having monsters jump out and say booga 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 isn't going to get tiring? Oh man. This happens a lot throughout the game too. It gets grating in just minutes. Jump scares can be effective, but it's all about execution. Instead of letting the atmosphere breathe and get under our skin, you have these annoying pop-ups that startle us but take us out of the mood. Again, like a cheap haunted house attraction. By the end of the game, it becomes tiring and predictable. How did Doom 64, a game released on inferior hardware, do it better? Well, hopefully we can forgive that if the gameplay is fun. I might have a few choice words on that statement. Doom 3 is the series we all know and love at its core. You travel down corridors, fight a variety of demons using cool, badass guns, and find the exit at the end of each segment. The gunplay is fun, and the demon's AI is competent, making battles intense. Some of the new additions to the arsenal, such as the machine gun, grenades, and the soul cube, makes the combat feel refreshing. There's strategy that goes into using these weapons. It never gets old. But then everything else around this solid gameplay starts to cave in. Quite literally, too. Here's my main issue with Doom 3. It's suffering a huge identity crisis. It tries to elicit the horror of being trapped in a space station by using every trick in the book, including claustrophobic environments. Then it remembers that it's supposed to be an action game, too, so it throws guns into the mix. Well, any good action game requires maneuvering to avoid taking damage, but with a combination of almost dark lighting and tight walls, it distracts you from avoiding attacks. In fact, some tight spaces lead you to getting cornered by monsters, unable to escape, even when shooting bullets in their face. Maybe that was the idea, but it just becomes a nuisance when I have to constantly reload my save data. This is most of the game, walking down boring corridors, fighting monsters with very little room to escape, and enduring cheap jump scares. Oh, and the monster jump scares are annoying gameplay-wise. Sometimes you'll be minding your own business when one sneaks up behind you and gets a free hit. It's even worse when you're in the middle of fighting one monster and can't focus on the tight, restrained environments to notice another. The monster placement is constructed with little thought and effort. Sometimes monsters will pop out of random closets or doors you've opened and attack with little time to react. Yes, this was in the original 1993 game, but you had a moment to back away and position yourself to retaliate. Unless you've played Doom 3 to death and know the layout flawlessly, you're gonna get a pot shot from a camping imp bitch. <laughs> Oh 
I really tried my hardest to look past these issues. I wanted to love this game for putting a fresh new spin on the Doom formula. It's a case of sounds good on paper, executed with subpar results. There were times where I needed to walk away. It felt like the game was going on forever. This is a long game. Can take around 11 hours to beat. 11 hours of the game waving its spooky fingers at your face. Now, I know what you're thinking. Well, Doom 64 tried to be scary. Why does it get a pass? Because it knows where true horror lies. Atmosphere, build up, and sustaining a feeling of dread throughout the whole experience. It balanced the claustrophobic environments with wide open areas that can have a strong effect too. It's the feeling of solitude, that you can't hide anywhere. Walls can't protect you from the nightmares that'll surround you like a pack of hungry wolves. Doom 3 goes for every trick in the book, and its gameplay suffers as a result. But I don't outright hate Doom 3. When the combat works, it really works, and it's satisfying to kill demons. The hell levels are the creepiest parts of the game, relying on abstract landscapes to create a scary and creative world. And the presentation is strong, but Doom 3's mesh of different ideas just never gelled together, and as a result, it's an irritating mess of action and horror. Of course, that's my opinion. Maybe you see something there I don't. Maybe the cheap scares are a part of the experience. Maybe the tight spaces give you an exciting new challenge. Either way, it's not horrible. Just know what you're getting into before purchasing it. Whatever you think of the game, it's still an important piece of Doom history. But Doom 3 wasn't done yet. Just 8 months later, on April 3rd, 2005, an expansion pack was released entitled Resurrection of Evil. Set two years after the main game, the UAC detects a strange signal on Mars and sends a group of marines out to take a look at it. During the investigation, our hero, a combat engineer marine, uncovers a powerful artifact that not only kills his team, but resummons the forces of hell. As of any Doom game, you must now take on hell by yourself. Well, at least you get a free souvenir from it this time. Running on the same engine, Doom 3's presentation is still stellar. Good visuals and excellent sound design. There are some key differences in the new experience. First, the super shotgun is obtainable, and it's easily the highlight of the game. Strong, loud, and able to take demons out with a single blast? Yes, please! Everything about it just works. Nothing is more enjoyable. Next up is the grabber gun, which can hold certain objects above the ground and can be used to throw projectiles back at enemies. Now that's creative! Truly no other game could... Oh, wait. Well, it is fun to play around with and can be used to conserve ammo. You would think this would open the door for puzzle solving like in Half-Life 2, but they don't really take advantage of that scenario. It's pretty much used to throw shit at demons. Kind of a wasted opportunity in my opinion. Also, there are times where it doesn't seem to lock on properly. I don't know, maybe you have to be dead center to interact with an object, but it felt finicky. Either way, it's a nice addition, although its potential is left unexplored. Then there's the artifact. A fun little demonic artifact that can be useful in various situations. I enjoy using it, especially to slow down time and watch hapless enemies stand there as I pump them with shotgun shells. Boy, who's the real bad guy here? Well, still hell, they're pretty bad. <laughs> I might be a close second though. The one issue that Resurrection of Evil does address are the jump scares. They're not nearly as prominent, and enemies don't sneak up on you anymore. This one fix alone makes the game better than Doom 3. I feel like I don't have to worry anymore about getting a free, cheap hit from a monster. But many of the other problems from Doom 3 persist. It's hard to maneuver in the narrow hallways, and your vision is obstructed by the darkness. The level design is still uninteresting, with Hell once again being the highlight. It is shorter, however, so I don't feel like it's a huge slog to play through. 
There are some new bosses included, and while they're simple, I had a good time fighting them. And there isn't too much more to say. Aside from some new additions and improvements, it's still the same game. If you didn't like Doom 3's action horror style of gameplay, then this won't change your mind. Not by any means fantastic, but it's a much better experience than the actual Doom 3. So, Doom 3 overall isn't a masterpiece. Some people might hate that it forgoes the high speed action for something slow, atmospheric, and frightening, but should it be lambasted for trying something different? No, that's what I admire most about it. It took chances, it wanted to take the series in a new direction that would be refreshing, to remind us why Doom is one of the most important games of all time, because it set new grounds. While it is different, and flawed, deep inside its red demonic chest is the same proud beating heart that gives this series life. It'll always be a part of the Doom family.